I wanted to play in the WNBA. Not hitting five feet tall just wasn't realistic. <laughs> the next best thing was to be a sports reporter. When did it go to a point where you were able to showcase personality? When the bump started and people saw Bump Kayla. I feel like Paul could be pretty intimidating. He can be, but not to me. The most important parts of your job is making the people on the other side of the microphone look like a star. One thing we've access interviewers have to keep in mind is that it's not about us at all. Who are your favorite co-workers that you see week in, week out? Our truth Luzos, Maria, Jess, our ref. You're probably not having a match anytime soon. I don't think in this lifetime. Oh, they're donut socks. I like it. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, wow. Donut just puts you in a great mood. Oh, man, <laughs> with the dad jokes right out of the door. Yeah, they'll be nonstop. What else? You got another one for me? You'll have to see. Oh, what's, what's a dentist's favorite time? Tooth hurting. Tooth hurting. I'm a newfound dad, so I've got... Oh, listen, I got you. Please. Yeah, and um, are we rolling right now? We are. Okay, yeah. so We're just rolling right into it. Our referees started something called Total Zebras. I and saw I helped that. them launch that because we all love me and Jason Ayers and Dan Engler love dad jokes. So I was in one of theirs last year. Um, they're going to revamp it in the new year. So I highly recommend if you're a dad joke fan to follow Total Zebras. What can you remember one from what they did from that bit? I did it in maybe Toronto. So we were outside the. It's my city. We were outside like the. Well, what arena do we do there? The Scotiabank Theater? Yes. The Scotiabank Arena, yeah. And I was around the hockey players in the front. Yeah, and yeah. Like, what was my joke? I think I said, um, why do hockey players like baking? I don't know. Because they're great at icing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a dad, you can never be in a bad mood when you're hearing a dad joke. No. no. Oh. And if you are, then you suck. <laughs> These are such tall heels. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, I, I'm not five feet, but today it just felt like a day that I wanted to be five feet. You seem, I mean, you're quite a bit taller than I am, so. What is your official height? Well, okay, there's a whole thing about that. I'm 4'11 and a half, but when I was, I, mean, I was very vocal about this because Wikipedia has me as 4'11. So the, Why is your height on Wikipedia? Well, is, is everybody's height? My height's not on there. Oh, well, maybe if it's just you have an abnormal height, it's on there. <laughs> okay. So I told the internet, can someone, because I don't know how to do Wikipedia or change yeah. things. Yeah. So they thought it'd be funny to go in and change it to like four nine. So for oh. a while they put me at four nine, but they refused to give me my point five. So, so you want your Wikipedia height to be four eleven and a half? Yes. Why not round up? I try that, and people call me out on it. I'm just you, trying to be honest. You don't want to be in the five foot club. I would love to be in the five foot club, but people look at me and they're like, "No, you're not." Hey, maybe one day. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> one. I'm in my thirties, but hey, by forties we'll hit five. You'll feet. hit another growth spurt <laughs> at some point in time. I don't know. Maybe you do some yoga and oh, stretch do things it? out. Okay. I don't, I don't know. One of those like old like torture machines that like stretch your body out. Maybe. Yeah. I think if those worked, there'd be a lot of uh, short dudes that would be trying that stuff. True. So maybe yoga is the way. Someone is gonna after this episode airs. I promise you, someone will fix this Wikipedia I entry. hope so. 4'11 and a half, if you put five feet, I won't be mad. No, it, it's going to be fixed. <laughs> There's enough people watching this that know what they're doing. Good. This is going to be fixed. Do it. That'd there be it is. Best Christmas gift. So glad we could do this in person yeah, here in L.A. How long have you been in L.A.? Everyone has an L.A. story. Yeah, I ju it's just passed a year in Los Angeles. Hey, congrats on your L.A. anniversary. Thank you. I just made that up. I liked it. I made up a lot of L.A. I was calling it California for a while. Hey. Like, my name is K-A-Y-L-A, but the last L.A. Yeah. So. Oh, that's good. I mean, I feel like I'm an imposter, but I'm just trying. <laughs> you're, you're able to live anywhere because I feel like people with WWE either live in Connecticut or they live in Central mm -hmm. Florida. They live in Orlando. That's the great thing about my gig. I've been in the company now for over seven years. Yeah. Um, the first couple of years I was in Orlando because I was working at uh, NXT at the Performance Center. But now I can live wherever I want as long as I'm near a major airport. And that goes for most of us. So I was like, there's never going to be a time in my life where I can just get up and go. And WWE was so supportive of me coming out to LA. I was living in uh, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Florida beforehand. So yeah, I was like, why not? So what's the what's the goal here in LA? LA, because everyone comes out here and they're like, I want to do. Yeah, I think I just wanted to. It's, it's a lot of opportunity out here. I wanted to grow, um, obviously within the company, and also looking for other opportunities to do like some crossover work. I love entertainment and celebrity news, and that's kind of where my career started. So where else? what better place to go than Los Angeles. And yeah. the way WWE has been so good lately about bringing in celebrities and we're realizing how big the fan base is in the entertainment world. Yeah. So the whole idea was me to come out here, be on the red carpets. I'm sure, you know, we'll cross some paths now that we're back, back rocking and rolling on 
premieres and stuff. So yeah. I saw you at the premiere for what was that movie called? The J Lo movie. Oh, oh. You were there too, Zeus. Uh, the J Lo movie. Yeah, Jennifer Coolidge was in it. Yes. I freaked out when I saw her. Oh my god. Why can't I remember the name of this thing? I feel bad. Oh, we have all the world's either. information here. Hold on. Uh, we, we will figure it out here. Hmm. Great movie. Yeah, it was a really fun movie. Love and it was called so Shotgun Wedding. Shotgun Wedding. There we go. I saw you at the premiere for Shotgun Wedding. We sat in the same row. Oh. How good was that after party, too? That's what I mean. It was so fun. Like, the right on was, Hollywood Boulevard. And we were just like casually hanging out with Jennifer Lopez and, and Ben and Coolidge. I didn't get that close to them. I, I, got, I kept inching closer and closer. Okay, and then what happened? Security started yeah, inching closer. Yeah, they started pushing me further and further <laughs> yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I've I've seen you at a few things. I thought you might be at the Iron Claw on Monday. I know I wasn't. I was not there, but I'm so excited to see. I'm hearing it was absolutely incredible. Yeah, and your friend John Cena was there. Friend John couldn't Cena couldn't see him, but he we yeah. heard. <laughs> we heard that he was we there. <laughs> I love that you used that joke when you sat down with him. I had to do it. I and he had no idea I was going to do it. And John and I have only met a handful of times. He doesn't know how hilarious I am. So I wasn't sure how it was going to be received, and of course he he had a great time with it. So I what feel a great like guy. that joke has. I think mean, John Cena is already so in, in incredibly popular and talented. That joke has like taken it like just that much like one level up. That's what he said. It's like my specific joke. Well. <laughs> we even said that he said the longevity of this joke. He said it's insane that it's stuck around for this long and people continues. It's going to be around forever. It's it's wild. It's great. So winter is here and I'm sure you can relate. It's tough to find the right temperature when you're sleeping. So recently I found a way to find the perfect temperature every single time with silver infused bed sheets made by Miracle Made that were inspired by NASA. Using silver infused fabrics that yes are inspired by NASA have self cooling properties for a better night's sleep. And that technology infused with silver helps to prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, which means that they will stay cleaner and fresher up to three times longer than other sheets. So no more gross smelling bed sheets. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and they feel as nice if not nicer than some five star hotel bed sheets. And since it's the holiday season, Miracle sheets are the perfect gift for your spouse or your family, your friends or Hey, even for you, if you want to sleep on some much nicer sheets than what you have right now, go to trymiracle.com slash CVV. When you go there, you'll see, oh my gosh, I'm already saving over 40%. Well, check this out. Enter the code CVV at checkout. You'll save an additional 20% plus you'll get three free towels thrown in. That's trymiracle.com slash CVV. And this is backed by their 30 night guarantee. So if this isn't for you, they've got you covered. It's trymiracle.com slash CVV. So for WWE fans, uh -huh. you don't exist in their world until you like started there. What happened? What was Kayla doing before WWE? Oh, yeah. So um, I studied broadcast journalism in college. I minored in sports broadcasting. I really wanted to be a sports reporter. Actually, before that, I wanted to play in the WNBA. Let me just start there. Okay. I played basketball through high school was my favorite thing and I wanted to cover it one day. Back to the me not hitting five feet tall just wasn't realistic. <laughs> so the next best thing was let's be a sports reporter. But my first job out of college ended up being an entertainment and travel host. Um, you can't be picky when you're right out of college and it was an awesome opportunity in Orlando. And I did that for a couple of years. If you're ever on YouTube, people at work pull me aside all the time and they're like, was that you giving a tour of the Cinderella Castle? Like. Look it up. It does not look like me, but it was like 15 years ago. And it's like the main thing you'll see. If you want to see inside the Cinderella Castle, it's 22-year-old Kayla showing What you outlet is this you were reporting this for? This was for NBC, the local NBC affiliate, West 2 News in Orlando. Look, for you to be in a market like oh, that. Oh, it right was the coolest school. gig ever. I mean, wow. I was so like persistent with the news director. Um, hey, kids who are looking for jobs, you know, be persistent and take initiative. I was just harassing him on How, every outlet. So what are we talking about? Just sending lots of emails, calls? What are we talking so about? So I went through LinkedIn. Um, okay. Is LinkedIn still a big deal now? I think so. I know at that time, like, it was, like, popping. So I was, like, looking up news directors. I wanted to work in Orlando so or in Florida. So it was just emailing news directors. And Bob Longo, Bob Longo, if you're listening to this, I love you. He's the reason for my career. Um, the job posted was a traffic reporter job. 
And as I told you on my way over here, I'm very navigationally challenged. And when I told my dad, I was like, I'm going to go audition to be a traffic reporter. He goes, Kayla, we live in a town of 500 people, and you need your GPS to get to the gas station. <laughs> like, you trying to get people to work on a busy day, that just should be a criminal offense. I failed miserably. I tripped and fell on the green screen. Um, it was one of the most embarrassing moments ever. For your audition? Yeah. Oh, no. So, and Bob Longo's a straight shooter. He's like, Kayla, we love you, but you sucked. It's not going to work out. So I was defeated. Went back and moved in with my parents. Oh, that's such a hard thing to do when you're, uh, you know, sometimes you got to do it. Mm. And then this job listing hit for this brand new position called the Orlando My Way Reporter. And the gig was to go around Central Florida and just show people what's fun to do, whether it's bars, restaurants, theme parks. Um, and so I reached out. I said, I want this job. And he's like, you're not qualified. We have like 20 other people who are. Sorry, it's not going to work. But if you're ever in Orlando, swing by. And I did. I was in town. And then... Obviously, I never heard about the job. One random day, I got a call from an unknown number. And he goes, hey, Kayla, it's Bob Longo. You got the job. We'll send you over the details. Click. What? I, I mean, I don't even know why. I found out why later. I was very cheap, and I could shoot and edit all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that, that's a good thing to know. It, yeah, honestly. Like, wear as many hats as you can. Mm -hmm. Right? Produce, edit, I report. I did all of it, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I did that for two years, and it was amazing. And it definitely prepared me for this gig. And even Michael Cole says, like, the stuff he saw me do there is what he brought me here for. Kind of be like that fun entertainment girl. But I'm, I'm just so fascinated that that was the thing that led you to WWE. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people think, oh, in, in order to get to WWE, you've got to know the ins and outs mm -hmm. of WWE and how many championships every single person has won and the location of all 39 WrestleManias. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, I didn't really watch wrestling before. Mm -mm. And I was very open. I'm still very open about that. And I think that also was a kind of a positive thing too because I didn't coming in fresh and um, being able to be molded into something that they do want me to be yeah you don't and have to unlearn things it yeah, exactly it also mm. didn't come in like super starstruck you know sure. like someone big could walk by and be like I don't know you know I mean obviously we know who Randy Orton is but back then maybe I wouldn't have you know sure so um yeah it's wild and at the time I was like I'll do this for a year and see what's next and year eight. We're going on year eight. Well, <laughs> and well, I love it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How did you even find the gig? Actually, someone within the company reached out to me and asked if oh, I'd be interested. Oh, they found you. Um, yeah, some, a, a former um, employee who I knew outside of work um, asked if I wanted to work with WWE. And initially, I was like, I'm good. Like, no thanks. I was still, tra I was still chasing that entertainment travel gig. Yeah. Um, but then uh, growing up, like one thing my grandfather always told me was like, he always used the term unexpected opportunities and how you just need to grab them because you never know where it's going to lead. And that was kind of like my drive to do it. I was yeah. like, you know what? I can do it for a year. It's going to be great on my resume. I'm going to learn a lot, meet a lot of people. Um, there's no downside here. And then it was not even six months. And I was like, I... I'm obsessed with this place. It's so cool. I think you've gotten more opportunities with WWE than you ever would have got if you went down oh the entertainment gosh. path. Like if 100%. you were working for E or Access Hollywood or Entertainment Tonight. Oh, yeah. I feel like you're getting way more opportunities here. Oh, without without a doubt. And again, the whole term, sports entertainment, I'm getting the best of both worlds. I yeah. get to do the sports thing. I get to do the entertainment thing. I've worn almost every single hat you can possibly wear in WWE. I've grown. I've yeah, I mean, there's no way, and you know, I have friends, no, you know, not disrespect, but like friends who are went the other path, who are yeah. just kind of more stuck in a lull because they're pigeonholed into the one specific thing and not being able to grow. Yeah, there was a, you know, like I've worked in entertainment news my entire career. Mm -hmm. There was a time when people used to turn on the TV at 7.30 and watch entertainment news mm -hmm. to find out what happened today. And then, you know, the internet really yeah. came into it, you know, what it is now. And there's, why would I watch a show in the evening when I can just pull up my phone and go, oh, that's the latest with exactly. the celebrity. Exactly. Quick TikTok search and you got all your stuff. TikTok search function is so good. <laughs> you know, it really is. I love me some TikTok. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at bluechew.com. And when you use the code CVV, you'll get your first month free. Ah, that wasn't even supposed to rhyme, but that worked great. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets, and best of all, a fraction of the cost. 
And the process is so simple. Just sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you are good to go. You receive your prescription in just a few days. Blue Chew wants to help you step things up in the bedroom. They wanna help you chew it and do it. Oh yeah. And I mean, this is such a good deal too, right? If you've ever thought about giving it a try, go to bluechew.com, use the code CVV. Your first month is free. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. Yeah, it's such a good deal. I, I can't even believe it. I'm gonna say it again one more time for you. Your first month is free when you sign up at bluechew.com and you use the code CVV. You just have to pay $5 for shipping. I also can't believe I said chew it and do it, but hey, it works, right? So what did your WWE audition look like? Um, so when I came in, I was a ring announcer. People tend to forget that I ring announced for my first several years. Give us a little. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I retired. Um, I hated it so much. Not like I always say this. The ring announcers, I mean, Samantha, which by the way, freaking incredible. She's going to be historical in this company. But people don't give ring announcers, I think, the credit they deserve yes. a lot of times because they're just this, this voice of God. That is the hardest job I've ever held. When I say I hate it, it's not because I didn't like think it was a great gig. It terrified me. It is a very difficult job to do. In what way? Um, well, I'm a TV person, so I'm used to, to camera. This is to crowd. Yeah. I have extreme stage fright in front of people. Like, that is a fact. I have a hard time with people. Um, and then... You have to memorize like all those things, like the weights, the uh, the hometowns, the monikers, everything. Yeah, um, it's just a lot put on the ring announcer, and they make it look so freaking easy. And then using your voice that way, I don't. That's not my. I can't talk like that. I think people also forget how much of a part of the actual presentation of the entrance that is. Yeah, like how how much that that is a moment in the entrance in itself mm -hmm. to get the crowd involved. Absolutely, it's yeah. So I give so much kudos to all of our ring announcers, but it wasn't for me and. Um, but I told them I'll be the best ring announcer I can possibly be for you as long as you want. But I made it very clear I would like to. I'm a journalist at heart. I want to like be able to be that here and like host shows. Like I did the bump for the last four years. Yeah. Um, and they were very open to that. And uh, Michael Cole has been instrumental in getting me to where I wanted to be in WWE. And when the opportunity came up, the bump, um, they came to me and asked me if I wanted to host it. And then that like revived my my career here it's been that was like the coolest thing I could have ever done so your actual audition like I oh I didn't even answer your question <laughs> ADD <laughs> my actual audition was at the performance center and we were given like a script on how like to host a live event or um, a live event show so to come out welcome the crowd oh, almost like an MC like, like it, for anybody that's never been to a live event. yes yeah so that was kind of the audition process okay instead of like the camera stuff which, uh, if anybody's only been to Raw or SmackDown, that position really doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So this is, yeah, this is like a totally like a live event type of thing. Yes, 100%. So you're welcoming the crowd, letting them know what to expect, and yep. there's giveaways, is that? Yeah, like, a, like yeah, giveaways, merch, just whatever. I had to do some interviews. Um, but I will say, like, I'm so glad. Like, not all the announcers that are hired now have to go through the Performance Center. I'm so grateful that my generation of announcers, like mm. me... Uh, Mike Rome, we might be the two. I think there was Greg at that time too. Yeah, but right? I mean the two that are still here that oh, were. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just us. But we're we talk about how glad we are that we had to go through that performance center era, because I think that's why we are still here and like thriving because we learned how to do. Every, we could do any. You could throw. Oh, Byron, Byron at, of Crown Jewel got. Like he, he can wear, he can do everything. He's a Swiss army knife. And I told him that I, I've, I've been in the presence of Byron many times cause he hosts the press conferences. Mm -hmm. But after the last press conference in survivor series, I said, man, I don't think people appreciate how good you are, what you do. He's so good. He can do everything. And, and people don't realize that you've got the earpiece in and you're hearing so many different things and you need to make it seem to the audience like you know exactly what's going yep. on. You've got it all under control. Mm -hmm. So again, a shout out to ring announcers. Shout out to all you guys. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, thanks. When did it go to a point where you actually like were able to showcase a little bit more personality? Um, I think um, it takes a while because I do want us to be very kind of stoic. You've, you've seen the backstage interviewers and how we stare into the distance as the superstar walks away. Um, but I also, I think that kind of goes into like just making sure we get the job done. Um, 
I honestly think the bump, like when the bump started and people saw bump Kayla and actually realized, oh, she has a personality. They're like, okay, we want, we want that um, on camera backstage at SmackDown. So that was so good to get that go ahead to just be Kayla. Yeah, because so often, especially in the last, call it decade or so, backstage interviewers have just been like asking a question, mm -hmm. waiting for the answer, and then that's the end of it. Yep. You've been like worked into this a little bit. It's taken some time, but you've been like worked into this. Yeah, and to Paul Heyman, I mean, I give a lot of credit to Paul. Um, man, like that, I had so much fun doing all that back and forth with him with the bloodline. But, you know, Paul and I were doing Talking Smack together, and we didn't really know each other at the time. I knew, like, we didn't really interact a lot. And getting to know him on that panel um, and getting to go back and forth and realizing we we're both kind of spitfires, like, helped immensely. And then he, you know, got me on camera to do those bits with him on, um, on SmackDown with the Bloodline. And then now I am the sassy backstage interviewer. Like, the writers we even... Oh, wait, am I allowed to say that? It's real. Wrestling is all real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my interviews, though, I'm told I can be <laughs> a little sassy. So, How did Paul pitch the, the segments that you had? I don't even know. I think he just really wanted to help me, and he does that with a lot of – I see him with talent, other interviewers. Like, he just really wants to see what our, str our strengths are. Mm. And then he, I don't know, he just d makes it happen. I honestly don't know how he made it happen, but he did. But look, it goes from like you having mm -hmm. some fun and interacting with Paul Heyman to like it then became a focal point of the show where mm -hmm. he's going to be walking backstage mm -hmm. and you're going to pop out, up out of nowhere yeah. and surprise him. Yeah. And there was a whole compilation. People have made tons of compilations online about those. And we just like, hey, Paul, hey, Paul, and him yelling. Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> did that just randomly happen one day? I don't even remember how the first one happened. And a lot of times, like, Paul and I, we just go. Like, there's not, like, really talking about it beforehand. We just, whatever happens, happens. And I think that, like, the his freak out happened on one, and it just hit big. And so we just kind of kept doing it. We got a good reaction. Fans loved it. I feel like Paul could be pretty intimidating. Uh, but is that just the character? I mean, he can be. But not to me. <laughs> <laughs> to, to you, you guys have, I mean. We have great rapport, yeah. yeah. Like he's, yeah, we have a great relationship. And again, he's just, he's always so helpful. And even if it's a segment that he's not a part of, you know, he wants to, you know, give feedback and give notes. And like, you know, I, I, I really appreciate it. Because everyone's so busy on, on those days. You know, there's not a lot of time to stop and like show that you care enough to give feedback. Sure. So, it, yeah, it's definitely helped me become a better broadcaster. Quick time out here and quick question. Do you feel like WWE has kind of spoiled us in a way because pay-per-views or PLEs are now just a few bucks a month as part of a subscription package? So when you see pay-per-view prices from other wrestling companies or UFC or boxing, you're like, $55, $75, that's crazy, it's $4.99 on Peacock. And this episode is brought to you by NordVPN. And on top of the protection that they give you when you're on a public network, one of the best things about NordVPN is being able to change your digital location with just one click. So I'm gonna use the Logan Paul, Dylan Danis fight as an example here, just because it was the most recent big pay-per-view event. So check this out, $54.99 in the US, but if you use NordVPN to change your digital location to say the Netherlands, 4.99 euros. And euros and the US dollar are basically at par right now, so it's a little over five bucks. Change your digital location to Mexico, 89 pesos. That's less than $5. You get the point here, and you can do this by going to nordvpn.com slash CVV to take advantage of these insane deals that are going on right now. So grab this deal before the next pay-per-view of your choosing so you don't miss out. And NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if for whatever reason you're not totally satisfied, you've got nothing to worry about. But hurry, go to nordvpn.com slash CVV to take advantage of this deal, or just use that code CVV at checkout. Walk us through what an actual TV day looks like. So you, I imagine you fly on Thursday. Yes. And then Friday is it's, it's showtime, it's go day. Yes, so. so if we're on, you know, arrive at the building around 2 p.m. Eastern time, um, I immediately get into hair and makeup, so that takes about an hour or two, and then you're just kind of, we call, hurry up and wait, you know, you're just waiting to see what you're needed for. Um, Do you get with the people that you know you're going to have segments with beforehand and go, all right, so here's what I'm setting you up for, like, sometimes, how should I phrase this? Sometimes, but it's such a quick, you know, fast-paced day, sometimes you don't until you go live, 
So, really? And I'm a big fan of live. I love just being live. So. There's no, there's no safety net when you're live, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. I love it. I love it. Do you ever get segments where, like, it's coming up in a minute, and they're like, actually, we're going to go this direction instead? Oh, yeah, like, almost every single week. Really? Like, stuff changes. Like, yeah, you just, you just got to be. I almost, like, don't like being told what I need to say until right before because I don't want to, like, get different things in my head and then mix up because things do change throughout the day based on what happens in the ring. So I love, like, that's the adrenaline rush of just, like, going. I, I thrive on that. How fast does the TV day feel like it goes? Once the show starts, like this. Yeah. Um, leading up to it, you know. Hurry you up and hurry wait, up and like wait. But yeah, once the show starts, it's like, all right, everyone, like, you just, yeah. 10 o'clock is here before you know it. Yeah, I imagine between 8 and 10 is just boom. Yeah, boom. Because it's what, eight segments, is that? It just, it, it depends, guess. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it goes goes by really fast. Wow. Yeah. I I'm always so impressed with how you guys are able to do what you do. And I think one of the most important parts of your job is making the people that you're talking to, making the people on the other side of the microphone look like a star. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the key to that? I think um, one thing we, as backstage interviewers, have to keep in mind is that it's not about us at all. Like, our job is to put the talent over. Um, the moment we make it about us, like, being too expressive or whatever, it just it takes away. And over time, the more you're on camera, like, with me being here almost eight years, you naturally become a personality that people expect and want to see on, on camera. But um, I think the more that you even show to talent that you respect them enough to realize it's about them, they want to bring you in more as a, as a, as a part of it. But um, I think, yeah, 100%, I think it's just... Keep yourself small. It's not about us, but do a great job, and it'll mm -hmm. make you make you rise. I think one of the best episodes of SmackDown, maybe ever, happened a few months ago. Rock and John Cena. Oh my gosh! On the same show. And none of us knew. You didn't know? No. When did you find out that uh, the Rock was in the building? Like thirty minutes prior, may <laughs> maybe like because he was with Pat McAfee that day on College Game Day. I don't yeah. even think this was planned. I think Pat McAfee has this way of making everybody want to be his best friend. The fact he got The Rock to come to SmackDown, yeah. just, I mean, that's a very Pat McAfee thing. But I think it was just like that. Like, you know, Rock was in town. So why not swing by SmackDown? At what point did you hear, like, that he was in the building? I mean, I think it was literally, like, as it was happening. Like when his music hit? Maybe a little bit before that, but like very, it was like right then. It was a surprise for all of us. Wow. Like I freaked. And that was the second time I've ever met him. The first time was when we premiered on Fox for the first time. What was that? Like three or four, well, more than that, however many years ago. Yeah. Um, Five years ago. I, and close to, yeah. Yes. And I saw him and I was like, I have to say hi to him. And I kept like talking myself up. I'm like, it's now <laughs> or never, Kayla. Like you just got to do it. And I saw him and he was like done socializing and he was walking back to like his bus and I was like, now's your time. And I went up to him. I was like, and I said, Mr. The Rock. And I was like, oh, my God. I just called him Mr. The Rock. But he turned around, and we had, like, a five-minute conversation. And he's so good about making you feel like you're the only person in the room. And he, like, looked me in the eye and just asked questions about me. And that it was incredible. Like, he's such a genuinely good human being. Yeah. And so this time, he remembered me. I was trying to get an interview, interview with him, but he's a busy man. He promised me next time he sees me, I'll get my interview with him. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. But it was it was it was so cool. And like you said, with Cena there, where what city were we in? Do you remember? Yeah, it was Colorado somewhere. It, yeah, maybe yeah, maybe yeah, anyway. Like you were there, so I was <laughs> I don't even know where I'm gonna be this week. Um <laughs> the fact the fans bought their tickets without knowing that was yes, gonna happen was yes. such a like an incredible, incredible I mean imagine fans who have been fans forever and that may have been their very first show. And they bought their ticket. I think when they bought tickets, we didn't even know Cena was going to be there at the time. When, when the tickets went on sale. Right. I think you're right. So people bought their tickets. Then they find out Cena's going to be there. Then Pat McAfee's there. Yeah. And then The Rock comes out. Yeah. Like, holy cow. Yeah. Awesome. The, the Rock has this, like, special quality mm -hmm. that he makes you feel important in yeah. that moment. And I've, it's so rare with anybody, let alone the biggest stars on yeah. the planet. He, he turns the moment around and he makes like you feel great. And I, it's such a unique quality. And I try to borrow that mm -hmm. as much as I can from him. But nobody does it like he does it. I, I agree. But we all should take that, you know, from him. Like you said, he's the biggest star in the world. 
so busy. He doesn't have to stop to talk to anybody, but the fact he does. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of celebrities get talked at. Like, you know, you're meeting them and mm-hmm. you're telling them all the things and they just kind of stand there and go, yeah. oh, wow. Well, thank oh, you. Yes, thank you. He, like, involves you. Like, I, I saw him for Black Adam last year. Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, you still living in Miami? And I'm like, he does. What? He remembers that. You, were, you know where I, what? I know. I was like, this is crazy. And then a friend of mine who was watching the conversation came over after. He goes, um, I just want you to uh, get this straight. Um, the Rock was making small talk with you. And I'm like, <laughs> I know. Like, that's how great of a guy he is. <laughs> so for all of that to be part of that one show uh, on SmackDown. And I think, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, like that, the fact that that was so special because The Rock wasn't announced before. Mm-hmm. Because people weren't buying tickets to know that he was going to be there. Yep. All of that's so I know. great. And again, for all of us, just backstage, like it just kind of boosts morale a little bit that, you know, oh my gosh, this is our coworker. These are our coworkers. Like, yeah. these are my coworkers. Like, who gets to say they're coworkers with John Cena and The Rock? That's you. Right? Me. Yeah. That's right. You. <laughs> who are your, some of your favorite coworkers that you see week in, week out? <laughs> um, like on air? Yeah. Um, People we might know. Well, let me just tell you how extremely happy I am that our truth is back. He's always been one of my favorite people in the world. We got to host uh, Raw Talk a few times together, and now we're kind of like tossing up some ideas for he and I to host potentially a show of some sort together. Like what? I mean, that's all I'm saying. It's like, like literally what? like WWE hasn't even signed off on this. This is just me and Truth talking about it. So you put out a tweet out about this though. I did, so and it's... people people definitely responded to it. But so happy like that he's back. He's really fun to have. You um, introduced me to our truth when we were in Chicago. So thank oh, you. Oh, is for that what that. I did? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're like you haven't met him yet. He is the coolest. Here he is. You gotta, he's someone good to have on your show. I he said that you will give me his phone number, and I'm like, I, okay, okay I'll done. pass it along yeah. to you. So he will he will sit right there. And oh, you that'll be that'll probably be like your best like interview ever. I don't know if an hour is enough time with our truth though. You might just need to bring him on as a co-host to be honest. Seri- <laughs> like have him for like ten episodes, and <laughs> yes. we still wouldn't tell his full <laughs> exactly. story. Exactly. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, so happy that he's back. What a return. I know. At, at Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the biggest return of the night at Survivor Series. I think Series. so. I, I, I stand and say that was the biggest return of the night. Did you see when Triple H in the press conference was like, all right, we got to talk about yep. the return tonight. <laughs> Our truth. Our truth is back. Yes. I do think people, fans, I mean, we're so elated to see that, you know, he's just set this fresh breath air on camera, like with the comedic aspect, the stuff he's doing with the Judgment Day, the jelly rolls. He's, he's, just, he's just so natural and just so good. Yeah, and it just, it, none of it feels like forced. Mm-mm. Everything he does just feels like, yeah, it's totally something our truth would say. Yeah. He's like a, he's like the human form of a happy pill. I you like know? that. That's how I yeah. describe him. Or so, like, or like F3, you know? Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you for working out and use the code CVV to save some money at F3 Energy. I'll bill you. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Who else do you love working with? Um, love working with, obviously, um, the Usos have so much fun with them. <laughs> um, love Rhea. I'll tell you what, and the female locker rooms are so great too. Like we all get along very well. We're having a secret Santa this week. Like it's such like a what? cohesive like family. What's the uh, price limit? We said fifty. Oh, that's that's very generous. Yes, and okay. I'm not. When is this going out? Uh, maybe two weeks. Probably oh. after Christmas. Oh, great. So it's this week. So I can say who I got there. Yeah, we, yeah. So another incredible person I work with who doesn't get the credit that she deserves is Jess, our ref. Is she your secret Santa? She's who I got. Oh, uh, so what'd you get Jess? So she is obsessed with her golden retriever, Bowen. So I got her a Where's Bold, uh, Bowen, like Where's Waldo, got her a custom book made, and she is a whole book where she gets to find her dog in there. That is so thoughtful. And then I got her, she, she's... She, Fitness queen, so I got her like a cool ornament that says Mary Liftness. Wow. And then, I'm surprised the book itself wasn't $50. It was like $25. Jeez, Etsy, now everyone's going to go buy Etsy. this. Look at you promoing everything. All right? Um, so yeah, got her some fun little things. So That's very kind. Do you have any inclination of who your secret Santa might Not be? Not a clue. Who, who has you? Hmm. Not a clue. So hmm. we'll see. Okay. I hope they did well. Speaking of the female locker room, I feel like the Iconics really got your name oh. over. I miss them so much. They're the best. I just saw Cassie like mm-hmm. a week ago okay. uh, in Milwaukee in an event called Blizzard Brawl. They're just the sweetest. They're Her the sweetest. and Sean. Yes. Oh. And they're moms now, which has been so great. It's all the new mothers in wrestling and WWE lately. It's been so cool to see. It's yeah. such a testament. Women can do both. Absolutely. And WWE's been so supportive of that too. 
So, um, yeah, I love it. There's going to be so many babies running around backstage. But I feel like <laughs> them saying Kayla, like mm -hmm. really. Hey, Kayla. <laughs> yes, that's where it all started. It, People still do it. Of course they do. Yeah. I feel like that like became almost like a catchphrase mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. It did. Yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah, that's, uh, I, th that's, that's kind of the other thing with wrestling. You need a thing to like attach to, mm -hmm. and that became like your thing. Hey, Kayla. Yes. And that became like the thing, at least for a little while. Yes, absolutely. Now it's probably whatever you're going to do with our truth here. <laughs> you know. The secret project you're working on. He sent on. me some great ideas for names. I'm not going to share them yet, but they're, oh. we'll workshop them. Okay. <laughs> I, th this is the great thing about you and WWE is you keep growing, and you keep wanting to do more mm -hmm. and bigger things. Where could you possibly go from here in WWE? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, there's just now with like, you know, we, we were, you know, with Endeavor and there's like, you know, all these other like platforms and resources that we can use. I'm really trying to tap in, tap into that. Um, whether it be podcasting, I've wanted to do a podcast for, for a long time. Um, I've thought about trying to pitch a late night show, like something that's the bump, but like after dark, you know, a little mm. more fun. So you know Vince used to host a late night show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in, way back in the day. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. And I th they've been so good to me about noticing when my like creative juices are f feeling stalled. Like I mm. think there's a lot of, a lot of loyalty back to me since I have been here for so long. And you know, during the, the pandemic was kind of rough because around that time, three of our backstage interviewers left, and so and I wasn't necessarily ready to jump into all those spots, but I had to. There was mm -hmm. no other option. And I remember my first kickoff show. I was never planning to do those. I was terrified like to do a kickoff show. And it was after when Renee um, dis, uh, left and Cole goes, hey, you have to do the next kickoff show because Charlie was gone too. And I was like, what? Like I've never done a kickoff. Like what are you talking about? And I think my first one was gonna be like right before Mania. And Mania is a two hour kickoff show by the way. Anyway, all this to say, I was terrified and Cole looked at me and goes, why? You can do this in your sleep and walked away. And that boost of confidence of just like, why are you worried, mm. helped me so much versus, okay, well, you need to get in here. We need to work on this. He was like, Kayla, you, why are you nervous? You can do this. And I was like, he right. I can do this. <laughs> and now I've done it. So I love that Michael Cole is getting the appreciation yeah. that he has so long deserved. I, I, I've been such a fan of his work since the 90s. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now people are finally He's going. getting his flowers. Yes. Man. Finally. Yes. That's why I dressed up as him for Halloween this year. I did saw you, did that. you catch that? <laughs> did he know? No. Not a clue. Not a clue. So you just like walked in and you were like So I talked to Could it be? <laughs> I talked to Brian Fadham, who had talked to uh, Kevin Dunn about it. And they're like and they everyone loves messing with Cole. So when I brought it forward, Fadham was like, Oh yeah, we'll make this happen. Um, so I got that, I found that little, uh, singlet on Amazon, had Surratt, who's in our, one of our seamsters, um, put coal on it, got all the, got the, the wig was bad. I wish I had more time to do the wig and the soul patch, but, and then I texted Bailey cause they have that long feud. I was like, Hey, will you do this with me? And she's like, hell yes, I'll do it. So Cole had no idea. He was told that Bailey was cutting a promo, an open challenge. And then Cole was told to do commentary over it. So he was already standing up, getting ready to go. And then I come out and he's like, what the hell? It, like everyone, it was so amazing. I wish I had learned a look, a wrestling move before that I could have done with Bailey instead yeah. of just falling to the ground, but whatever. Can you do a Michael Cole impression? Not really. Oh, w, God. W, E. No one says W, W, E like he does. It's in, how does he do it? I don't know. The way he enunciates it? W, 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 -W, -W, -W E. W, W, -W E. <laughs> I'm like W, W, E. I think we all do. Yeah. W, W, E. Yeah. W W E. Yep, and he always says it so clearly. But yeah, I think his his catchphrase now would be like, "Oh <laughs> my, it's boss time." It's yes, and it it's so fun. He's having so that much fun right thing. now. Like he's oh just having gosh. casual Cole. You know, like it's like he's just having a great time, as he should. It's like twenty seven years here. But how is casual Cole one of the greatest of all time? I mean, I don't know. He he is though. You want to talk about someone doing something in his sleep? Yep. He's just naturally so good. Incredible. And it's so cool. Like, like uh, Kevin Patrick, who I absolutely love the fact he's getting to learn from someone like Michael Cole, the yeah. very few people on this planet who can say, I learned how to do commentary from Michael Cole. Like that's a, that's a really cool thing. Yeah. Uh, d is there an opportunity you think for you to do it? They like, brought Don't it up. Don't even ask the question. They brought it up to me and I was like, no, like, no. And I did it kind of, um, at the on sale ticket party. 
in LA a couple of years ago with Fluffy. And they just let me have fun. They're like, Caleb, we gotta put you on commentary. Just, just you and Fluffy? It was me, Fluffy, Corey. So Corey was okay, obviously okay. like keeping Someone's us all together. Driving the ship here. But there's a clip online, we played it on the bump of my commentary, and it was hilarious. Like I forgot I was doing commentary. I think Austin Theory was in the match, and I was just like, get off of him, Theory. Like I was going super <laughs> fan mode. But you know, it was fun. Is it like it's so involved? And I think that people don't realize that to be a great commentator, it's almost I mean, it's so difficult to do. Is that what's, is it that it scares you? Yeah. Oh gosh. Like when I think about the, pre the preparation I do for a two hour kickoff show, which happens once a year and then a regular kickoff show happens once a month. And even that can be very nerve wracking because of all the stuff you have to like know and retain and yeah, questions what is you the ask. Prep? Um, I, just, I go through the card and just make sure I know all the stories and everything that's happening. Um, try to get some questions together to throw out to, to my very wild panel. Uh, when they get going, it's hard to ring, wrangle them back in, but it's fun. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it, just knowing what's going on. And then it runs pretty smoothly. But um, but yeah, I, I, like having to do that every single week and then have to talk for two hours straight, I, I don't, and like make sure you're sharp and getting into graphics and doing traffic and then tell, you know, telling the story and calling the moves. No idea how they do it. All while somebody is telling you, like... Oh, why someone's in your yes, ear. Yes, this is coming up in 10, yep. 9, 8, yeah. Or then things change like that. Like, ooh, that's a skill set. I honestly have no desire to ever do it. I really <laughs> don't. I feel like I would be so stressed and I'd be gray before I'm 35. But, um, but, yeah, they do a great job. If you didn't grow up watching wrestling, then you get the WWE audition that turns into the job. Where do you start? Because there's 40 years now of history with WWE. Oh. How do you start? I remember like when I got hired, because I, I got the job, and then it was going to be like a few weeks before I actually reported to the Performance Center. Yeah. They gave me the WWE Network. So they're like, just just watch. I ended up watching not what I was supposed to. What was the, the animated show that they had for a while? Oh, yes. Um, uh, so I'm just sitting there watching cartoons. Yeah. Um, so they're really, it's hard. There's nowhere to start. Like even watching like NXT, they're like, okay, NXT's on tonight. Watch it live. Yeah. And I remember like noticing it was um, Sanity, right, yep. with yep. Uh, Nikki Cross and all them. Yep. Not knowing what was going on, um, and then trying to like explain what I thought was happening, which wasn't was ha you know you have to really be immersed and like know the stories going all the way back. So yeah, if someone just drops you into it, you. You need an explanation yes. of like why this person is fighting this person. And yes. if you're not even aware of wrestling in general. Exactly. The psychology of like, I'm looking at it like a sport, which yeah. you can't look at it in the same way. Um, but I will say that as, you know, immersive as this place is and how much we're on the road and around each other, you learn so fast. Like it took no time before I was like, ah, oh, I feel like I've been watching wrestling for my whole life. But you, I, I don't feel like you're in the position where you need to know like what the main event at WrestleMania 18 was or no. something like that. And like, and, which yeah. I actually think is great because you, you don't need to be a historian mm -hmm. to be great in your present job. Mm -hmm. And that was what was great about The Bump. Matt Camp, who's the host of The Bump, yeah. he can tell you every single detail of when and where and what happened. He is like literally the historian and the encyclopedia of wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So it really worked out when I was on the show. I'm like, what? Like he could like fill in all the blanks of like the history of, of what happened, and I could just be the personality talking about what's now. So yeah, yeah. it was a great balance. Yeah, because there's so much history, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody who's watching at home and has the benefit of having you know all the world's information sitting in their hand can go, oh, actually, mm -hmm. actually, you said this, but the uh, true fact here is <laughs> exactly. this thing right here. <laughs> Have you been called out on making a small mistake? Um. I, when I first started, I did. Like, I was doing a house show, a live event, and I'm going around. And, like, you know, less is more, as I've learned. Like, don't try to, like, look like you know everything by s trying to spit out too many facts because you're probably going to mess up. But I was trying to. And I, I think I miss, like, the amount of time someone has held a certain title by, like, one. <laughs> but this guy oh. sitting in the front row stood up, and he schooled me. Like, he just was like, actually, it was this time. Like, you need to, like, he, like, schooled me on, like, needing to know my stuff. Wrestling fans are very passionate. Yes. But I did make sure after that and since then just to make sure I do my due diligence or just, like, don't bring it up if I don't know enough about it. That's probably, I mean, <laughs> less is more is probably the yeah. best lesson to be learned here. The idea that, like, 
I could just say their hometown and their name. Mm-hmm. I don't need to say how many times they were the champion. Yeah, just keep keep kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm-hmm. If we were to go back as you were like applying for colleges, what did you what was the dream job at that point in time? I've I've always known I wanted to be in television like since I was 9. What what happened at 9 that made you want to be in television? Um so I um public knowledge I was raised in a in a foster family and I moved into the foster home when I was 9 years old. Prior to the foster family, really rough childhood. I was I was in special ed, not because I was dumb. I never went to school because I was taking you know, a lot of stuff was happening. Um so I never applied myself, but when I moved to the foster family, they were very big on like school. We had tutors, like education. And I went to this small school in Alabama. And uh, in the South, if you know, we have this thing called 4 H and it's like these agriculture, sewing, whatever, we all were required to compete in one of these things. And I saw public speaking on there. Well, Miss Not Applying Herself was like, this seems easy. I just got to get up there and talk. I don't have to do anything. So we had to give a speech. And I noticed all the other kids had note cards. And I was like, I'm just going to memorize mine. Mm. And I did. And I won. And that was the first thing in my entire life I had ever won. And they gave me like a big purple ribbon. And I didn't even tell my foster parents I was doing this because I didn't want to disappoint them if I didn't win. And um, I got off the school bus and it was a very like Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, like running down with my golden ticket down the driveway. I won, I won. And they're like, we don't know what she won, but congratulations. (laughs) And they were so proud of me. And that was like the first time like an adult had been like proud of me. And I was like, well, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So I was a a competitive public speaker. That's so nerdy. <laughs> All through high school. I went to the White House and spoke in front of Bush, went to the Oval Office and got to hang out with him. Wow. Um, and then it was a no-brainer. I'd go into some form of, of broadcast. Wow. So, yeah. So the, the dream job would have just been hosting a TV show. I always wanted to be Oprah, but who didn't? <laughs> um, and then I got, again, like sports and entertainment. I've just always wanted to have like my own talk show. Again, that's why the bump was such a big deal for me because it yeah. really solidified me in that like, oh, she's a host. You were so great on the bump. I loved why, it. Why leave the bump? You know, it's just time. There's a season for everything. I think also because I've been here for so long, I recognize that I have, I have a lot of responsibilities, which might prevent up and comers from having opportunities. There's only so many here. And Megan Morant, who's hosting now, came in, was so eager to learn, like really like shot up fast in the company. And um, we were kind of testing her coming in and sitting in co-hosting and she's killed it. And so me holding on to that show, I feel like isn't you know beneficial to growing our team and making our team bigger so everyone can do, do more. So it was just time, mm. it was time. and. Everyone was supportive of it, and I still pop in every once in a while. But yeah, we're just building something new. Have you taken an in-ring bump? Yes. So <laughs> uh-huh. we used to have to take bump classes, or we had to take a bump class. The announcers did. This was many years ago. Oh. And so we all had to come. Because the whole thing is, if we're in the ring and, like, something goes sideways, we got to learn how to get out of the ring safely. And we're wearing high heels. you got to learn how to – if you fall, you got to learn how to fall safely. Mm-hmm. So we went to the performance center. We got to use the mat that's... It's like the crash mat? The cra- yes. Crash pads, yeah. But I'm terrified. Like, like Vic Joseph and Mike Rome are fearless, and they're like falling and have, doing a great job. I get the tough enough helmet on. I'm just like, Michael Cole is loving this. I think he filmed it. And I did my bump. And I'm so scared to go backwards. For like for, Even as a kid, I don't like doing anything falling backwards. Anyway, I did it. Didn't tuck my neck. And I like whimpered away, crawling into the corner. I couldn't move my neck for days. And that's when I was like, I have so much respect for what these guys are doing every single week. Like the amount of bumps our guys and girls are doing on a SmackDown, holy cow. So all of that is to say you're probably not having a match anytime soon. I don't think uh, in this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the thing, uh, I went to wrestling school when I was 20. Taking okay. bumps hurts a lot. Running, Running the, the ropes. ropes. I, wow, I've heard James. that. I know. Running the ropes like... Because it hits you right here and the, the meaty part of your back and kind of wins you a little bit. And then you get a nice bruise for the first week or two of running the ropes. Oof. And then the people that do this, the men and women that do this for a living, they're just callous to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Bumps don't even it's hurt It's like anymore. playing guitar, right? Yeah. That's a great... Gotta. Yeah, your fingertips get all callous. Mm-hmm. I, I just... I don't understand. Because you run the ropes for the first time, you're like, I'm never doing that <laughs> And then you, you know, you some of the people that are doing it... 
20 years in like Randy Orton. Yep, doesn't even feel it. Also, he is massive. He's like bigger than the ring, so the ropes probably hurt less on him than he's they would hurt on him. He's deceivingly large. He's so big. And he looks better now than he did when he left. Like he's increased like, how? Yeah. He looks better now at 43 than he's ever looked. He does. Ha what is going on here? I don't know. It's a little time off really helps. Time off. I think he's so, I think he's happy, you know, loves his family. I think, yeah. I always have such, a, he's always another one who's just so like kind backstage and helpful and like genuinely wants to talk. Like when, he, when I saw him for the first time in catering since he's come back, he stood up, came and gave me a hug, uh, catching up, like he cares, you know? Oh, wow. Something's happening right now in wrestling in general. It's more popular than maybe it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Are you starting to feel this, or when did you start to feel this? Oh, for sure. I think maybe when we started even bringing in like Logan Paul and Bad Bunny into it, and just seeing like even Bad Bunny's match at WrestleMania, I guess his first mm -hmm. real match at WrestleMania, I guess thirty-seven. That I feel like people were starting to go, oh, Bad Bunny's part of this. Yep. Oh, I've I haven't watched wrestling in a long time, or I've mm -hmm. never watched wrestling, but I like Bad Bunny. Mm -hmm. So now I got to start watching. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of eyeballs on Lots. what you guys are doing. Like you said more now than ever. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think that wrestling fans like to go back to like the Attitude Era was the best, mm -hmm. and of course hindsight's like mm -hmm. I don't know. People look at things with like rose-colored glasses. Yeah, the Attitude Era was great. I think what, this is going to be like the new great. Whatever sure. this new era is called is. Yeah, I think Pretty so. fantastic. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I can't go anywhere. It's like, I want to stay. I mean, I know, I've, I'm like, have I overstayed my welcome in WWE? I no. don't know. But now I'm like, now I'm going to stick around and see what, what's about to happen. What's what's about to happen? I, your guess is as good as mine. Is Roman Reigns going to be the champion for the next eight years? Who knows? Could be. Who knows? He, he'll be the champion. I mean, it's <laughs> a hell of a run that he's been on. See, honestly. And done a great job. Has becoming an employee at WWE made you a WWE fan? Oh, Yeah. That, and then also, like, because of the relationships you build with the talent. Like, they're my friends. Mm. So I'm so excited to see them go out there and, like, do their thing. And, like, when some of the females uh, go out there and do their match, I love waiting in Gorilla as soon as they're done to, like, see how they're doing. Give them a hug and say congratulations. Like, it's such a big family. So you're naturally a fan. And I do get excited. Um, after maybe Survivor Series, I was, like, I'm, I was with Jackie Redman. And I was so nervous because I don't know what's happening. I was so nervous about one of the matches. And I literally said, I'm so nervous. And she like busted out laughing at me. She goes, that's so endearing. She goes, you're like, we're, we're fans. <laughs> Where did you see CM Punk for the first time at Survivor Series? When he walked out. Wow. None of us knew. No way. No. And I love that. I love that we can still be surprised backstage. Yeah. I don't want to know everything. Even I w was a ring announcer. I would ask to not know. Like, like who would win? Yeah. Also, are we filling the curtain back too much? I mean, everybody knows. <laughs> but I liked, I want to be surprised um, because I am a fan and I want to be as excited as the fans are out uh, watching it. It just makes it just more special. I missed CM Punk coming out. You missed, what were you doing? So, super grateful to be able to be at the WWE press conference. And the way those work is one, two, three at the last match. The PR people grab us and mm -hmm. we all go to the press room immediately yep. because the press conference starts as they, soon yeah. as the event ends, right? So it was one, two, three at the end of the men's war game match. We're all being carted away. We're sitting in the press conference room. And then someone in the back was like, oh, I can't believe he's here. And I thought they were talking about like a, one of our friends or something, mm -hmm. like a, a colleague. And they're like, no way. CM Punk is here. And then we crowded around this little monitor on the floor and mm -hmm. we're like, he's He's like, like we're 200 feet from, but we're not in we're the, not in, yeah. we're in the building, but we're not in the, so I didn't. Oh, yeah. dang. Well, at least, you, at least you can say you were there though. It's technically. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't even get like the shock of like watching it unfold on oh my TV. Oh gosh, like, oh, I get like the way the crowd popped for that. That building, it, it's a special building mm -hmm. like, for the acoustics there. Yep. I, I don't know if it's that wood ceiling or if the, the roof's a little bit mm -hmm. lower. That I'd never been in that arena before, and I walked in there, and the chance just before the show even started, I'm like, it's really loud mm -hmm. for however many people are in here. And there's so much, we know, like Chicago, like the yeah. so much history with yeah. WWE and just wrestling in general. So I feel like there couldn't have been a better. Hey, and it's spot. his hometown. I mean, that too, but just like, yeah, that was that was. But yeah, I had no idea. Even when I was doing my kickoff show, people were like cheering, like CM Punk, and had the signs. And Booker T turned around at one point and goes, "Guys, he's not here." And I was like, oh, because Booker didn't know, but we're yeah. just like trying to kind of shut them up so we could talk. And I was like, okay, well, he's definitely not. Like, we honestly had zero inkling that it was happening. Wow. 
what a year 2023 has been mm -hmm. for wrestling. Oh, yeah. Like, think about it. We just talked about The Rock returning, The Rock and John Cena being on the same show, our truth returning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Randy's back. Randy's back. CM Punk is back, which no one thought would ever mm -hmm. happen. Hell froze over. That, what a great T-shirt. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys are going to top this in 2024. <laughs> we always find a way to do I it, know. though. You know, we got the Rumble coming up, which means we're on the road to WrestleMania. Um, yeah, they, they always have a way to top it. So I'm do excited. You, do you have a favorite match now that you're in this world of WWE? A favorite match like of all time? Yeah, sure. Oh, goodness. And it could be a favorite match that you've been, you know, there to watch. I know it's hard to always narrow it down to it's one. It's very hard to do that. Um... I'm trying to think, hey, was it Summers? No, that was that was a quick one. I said Becky and Bianca. I don't see anything with Becky or Bianca, especially uh, that, that anything with those two in it are, are like top tier to me. I like it. Um, but yeah, I, I can't narrow it down yet. But like you said, it's it's been this, there's been so much in the last in the last year. Um, but I do think it's gonna go down in history as like the best era in wrestling. Whatever they're gonna call this era, it's. It is the the era. It, that that should be what it's called. <laughs> I mean, it's the era right now. With NXT, like I love how much they're yes. intertwining NXT to make it like as big as Raw and SmackDown. There's so much talent in it. Like it's crazy watching and just seeing the level of talent at NXT. It I mean it matches the level of talent on Raw and SmackDown. And, and then peppering in like The Undertaker's on NXT. Cody what? Rhodes is on NXT. CM, CM Punk, Punk yeah. 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 It's pretty amazing. I love it. If someone wants to do what you are doing for a living, what, what's like the first step they should take towards that? Um, I don't want to say you like you mean as a broadcaster in general. Or I think WWE? there's a lot of people that want your specific, specific job. job. Probably, and that's also something else that's really cool to sit and think about. Like there's a handful of announcers in WWE, yeah, and it's there's only one WWE, and so yeah. it is wild to think that we have those like few sacred positions. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I mean, I think just like I said earlier, you know, take initiative. Um, you know, learn, try to like, like we said earlier too, like learning how to even shoot and edit, like me knowing how to edit, shoot my own stuff, get on there and, and host being a one man band as far as like the technical side, I think is really, really helpful. Um, but yeah, like when you, I have fans reach out to me sometimes and ask me the question like how they can follow my footsteps. I, I, I really respect that. Like reach out to us, you know, we can steer you in the in the right direction but i think just keep watching stay up to date on what's going on and yeah just take the initiative i think people really undervalue the fact that we have you know this thing in our pocket mm -hmm. that can make you comfortable on camera mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of people that don't utilize the fact that they could take that out and just film themselves at any yeah. point in time even if it's just for yourself mm -hmm. or uploading it to social media or yeah. youtube like getting comfortable on camera i think must be a helpful thing yeah. in broadcasting in general. It is, and just starting. Like, yes. when I was in college, I kept I was talking to um, a mentor of mine who was on local television about wanting to do, like, be a broadcaster. And he's like, just start. Like, shoot something on your phone and upload it. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, sitting on I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Finally did it. And that was, like, the start of my first talk show uh, that I started at, uh, at Belmont University. And that was it, just starting. I haven't stopped since then. I just yeah. put your foot on the gas, and then it's not gonna, it's not gonna come off. That's my favorite advice. Just start. Mm -hmm. it, 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 whatever it is that you want to do, you've got to take that first step to get to that last step. Mm -hmm. what's, Amen. What's that quote? It's uh, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Ooh, oh. I like that. It's what? almost as good as your dad jokes. Almost, not quite. What is this tattoo that's right here? What, no, the, the other side, yeah. Oh, it's my dumb one. It's a paper airplane with a fighter jet underneath it because I feel like it's, you know, I'm always on an airplane. But I always feel like a little kid. <laughs> window or aisle? Oh, window. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can sleep against it. 100%. Yeah. But it's always tough because then I, like, have to pee. And it's so uncomfortable to have to ask people to move. And Especially they're always if asleep. They're asleep. Yes. I tried to, like, be sneaky and crawl over this elderly man, and then I slipped. Like, it was a whole thing. <laughs> the flight attendant was busting out laughing because they were watching me do it. They're like, just wake him up. <laughs> if you can wake up one of the two people, usually the next person will be like, oh, oh I'm yes. sorry. Oh, now I'm awake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I end every conversation with gratitude because it's such a big, important part mm -hmm. of my life. And by the way, thank you for coming in here. Yeah, I'm glad this worked out. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we finally like connected. No, it's been so great having you here and hearing your story. And by the way, congrats to you and everything you've done. Thank you. Uh, I, right back at you. Thank you. You you were such an 
important part of what you do on SmackDown. And Thanks. I think that uh, the fans appreciate you being there so much. You bring so much uh, of an element to when you're on screen with uh, the other superstars. Mm, thank you. So gratitude is such a big part of my life. I wake up every day. I say out loud three things I'm grateful for. I do it before I go to bed, too. Mm -hmm. So what are three things in your life that you're grateful for? Um, my health. Um, my, the freedom that I've had to, to travel the world and be out here in Los Angeles. And my friends. I think having a really good circle of friends is so important, especially the older we get. Like yeah. just a good, solid group. So, yeah. I like it. Do you have a dad joke to wrap things up here? Oh, it's where gosh. we started. Oh, gosh. So. I don't know. Yeah. I'm on the spot now. You're on the spot. You know what? Just just go follow me on Instagram. I post them every single day. <laughs> okay. There it is. <laughs> and go follow Total Zebras. They have so many good They're jokes. They're so good. So, so good. good. Oh, I have one. Okay. okay. Here it is. Um, never mind. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I was in. <laughs> I can't even. I can't, never mind. I can't think of it. Everyone's in Minneapolis. Never mind. Okay, we'll just we'll just find just, it just like nix this part out of the interview. No, it's too late. You need to delete this. It's too late. Or I'll okay. Yeah, I'll I'll find one. We have all again all the world's information. Well, I made a joke there because we were in Minneapolis, we were in Minneapolis or something, or and I was like, everyone knows where the Big Apple is, but does anybody know where the Mini Apple is? Hey, that's pretty good. Everyone like yelled at me for that one. These aren't even good jokes, but since I just pulled them up, I'll give you one. Okay. Oh, these are really bad. Um, <laughs> Why don't lobsters share? Because they're shellfish. Oh, bump it up. <laughs> That's perfect. I'll use that one. So good to see you. You too. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Of course.